So we're back at the shop. I did a test drive after installing everything. There are some nuances, how I should put it, that just aren't good about the car. So for starters, the div bolt jumps really badly. I'm not sure why that is, but here's how it looks like. That's not good. And you can see that in the chassis, the drive shaft's already made some marks right there. And that's not good because those could rust and could potentially cause more rust spots. But the div keeps jumping and that's just not a sound or a structural type of thing. I'm guessing that there's a sound coming from the center of the drive shaft. That could mean that the center bearing is shot. Also, when driving the car, when driving it fast, like I mentioned before, the bushings are completely dead. And I'm gonna need to replace those two as well as the guibo over there. So I also ordered these bushings because these are completely dead. I don't know if I could get a better angle, but you can see that those are completely shot. I ordered the polyurethane ones because I'm so sick and tired of pressing in these metal ones. So the polyurethane should be sitting better, gives better response. And also I'm gonna get the offset ones because this is a 95. So as I was recording this scene with the bushing, I noticed something extremely dangerous. This is the engine mount. It completely broke off. The bolt right here is broke off. The bolt over there is broke off. The engine mount completely shattered. Over there, over here, it's completely gone. That's dangerous. The engine is completely sitting on the assembly right here. I'm gonna need to change that as soon as possible because that is dangerous. So I took a closer look and under closer investigation, this bottom bolt right here to the left was non-existent. That's rusted. And as well as on the top right, you can't really see it. But that one was also gone. So that is not what I had planned for this car. I'm gonna need new engine mounts, the actual assembly. I'm gonna need all of that stuff because that's, that's crazy. That's the first time that I ever saw that. And there was a mysterious clunking sound coming from the car too. So that's most likely what it was other than the diff jumping around. But in other news, I'm planning on putting little spacers on the car because I want the rear end to look a little better. I, I'm not sure which ones these are. I think these are five mils. And I got one more thing planned. So this is how the car has been driven around for the past few couple of days. This ugly looking mug is about to be transformed to something a lot better with this new bumper. Look at that paint job. So on this new bumper, I'm gonna fit it with a new grill, new lip, and some halogens. These are tinted. I don't know if that's the route that I wanna go. I'm gonna run these for a few weeks. Maybe we'll see, I'll change them to the brighter ones. But for now, I'm gonna get started with the lip. I'm gonna be screwing them in using these things right here. There should be 11 of them. So I'm gonna get to drilling holes in the bumper right now. So you can see here that the spacer actually did do something. So this side looks a lot more beefier now than as prior to this side, how it used to look. This looks a little weak. So here's another angle. Man, that looks good. And this is kind of just sunken in. Yep, the other side looks better. All right, time to put the spacers on on this side too. So I don't know if there's supposed to be a bracket here, but I just basically zip tied it using those two holes and it seems to be sturdy, doesn't move anywhere. And it's the same exact thing on the other side over here. Again, not sure if there's supposed to be a bracket. I'll look it up, but we'll see. And how I installed it, I looked it up online. There's many ways to do it, but this is how I did it. I put a little fastener retaining clip here and kind of fastened it through the other side over here so it's not in the way of the fog lights. And puts in the fog lights. And now if you shake it, it sits pretty sturdy and it shouldn't be going anywhere anytime soon. 
So before I show you how the whole bumper looks on the car, I wanted to point out that every E36 has this issue where the right side sags. Maybe only collectibles don't, but every E36 that's been street driven does. So the way you can regulate this is there's little clips inside. There's these little clips inside. This part right here, there's one over there, and another one behind this fender cover. Same thing goes to the other side. You could probably see it here better. You can see there's one right there, over here, right there, and there's one right there. And these can be used to put the bumper further in, further out. As you can see, mine is a little bit further in on this side, and on the other side, it's the opposite. What you could try doing is putting spacers behind this bumper right here to kind of space it out, which will help the bumper sit more flush with this top frame. So with the bumper being fitted on, I'm gonna close out the video. Got a lot of work done today, a lot of progress. The car looks great, and it's a bummer about the engine mounts, but that's, I guess, more content. So I'm gonna to need to order some front control arm bushings, transmission bushings, differential bushings. Maybe, we'll see. Uh, I need to do that diff bowl again. And there's just a whole lot of other things to do, such as an alignment and stuff like that as well. But that's all for future videos. Stay tuned and subscribe and like the videos, and I'll see you next time.